Hello there and welcome to The Breakfast News. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines this morning. Government's demonetization move completes one month. Opposition to observe Black Day. Central panel led by Chandra Babu Naidu to hold first formal meet today. Over 150 nations raise objection to cap on cash withdrawal, seek Prime Minister's intervention and warn that foreign governments may reciprocate measures against Indian missions abroad. Pakistan speaks in two voices over evidence against alleged Indian spy Kulbushan Jadav. Nawaz Sharif's advisor Sardar Aziz tells the Senate that the proof is insufficient but the Foreign Office counters it. All 48 people on board the Pakistan International Airlines plane that crashed in Abbottabad are killed. Three foreign nationals and popular singer-turned-preacher Junaid Jamshed dead as well. And India take on England in the fourth test match at Vankare Stadium in Mumbai. will look to seal the five-match series with the win. It has been a month since Prime Minister Modi announced the demonetization move of 500,000 rupee currency notes on November, November 8th and queues outside banks are still visible even as the Prime Minister advocates building a less cash society, asking farmers and traders to use mobiles as well as their banks and wallets. Opposition parties have, uh, that have been working together this winter session to take on the government over its move have decided on a protest dhana to mark the completion of one month of its implementation starting in, in fact there the visuals that you're seeing are of that dharna that have uh, started this morning 16 opposition parties including congress left tmc sp bsp dmk ncp rgd and jdu will also take a call on whether to register their views in the house before the session gets over on the 16th of december in the two remaining working days next week or allow the entire session to be washed out in Mumbai, the Central Committee of Chief Ministers and Experts on Demonetization-Related Issues, headed by Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N. Chandrababu Naidu, will hold its first formal meeting at the RBI headquarters in Mumbai today. Odisha Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik, Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan, Sikkim CM Pavan Kumar Jamling, Puducherry CMV Narayan Sami, Maharashtra Chief Minister uh, Devendra Fadnavis and Niti Aayog Vice Chairman along uh, Arvind Panag Panagaria and the CEO of Niti Aayog Abhita Abhitab Kant are members of the committee. RBI Governor Urjit Patel on Wednesday meanwhile said that demonetization would not have any automatic impact on the central bank's balance sheet, putting credence to the view of many analysts that government may not make any windfall from the demonetization. Uh, Deputy Governor R. Gandhi said that between the 10th of November and 5th of December, RBI supplied banknotes of various denominations worth about 4 lakh crore rupees. Meanwhile, the government has said that inflows into Jandhan accounts have come down significantly after it warned people not to allow their accounts to be misused for converting black money into white. The deposits in Jandhan accounts post demonetization saw a sudden surge. But after the centre's warning against misusing such accounts, there has been a continuous fall in deposits in the last couple of weeks. The total amounts deposited during November 8 to 15 were 20,206 crores, while during November 16th to 22nd, people deposited 11,347 crore rupees. So this further acts, uh, decelerated to uh, 4,867 crore rupees during November 23rd to the 30th. A uh, total daily deposit in Jandhan accounts was 410 crores on the 1st of December and 389 crores on the 2nd of December. Meanwhile, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps has asked India to relax the restrictions on withdrawal of money from banks and hope that the Prime Minister will intervene as a large number of foreign missions reeled under funds crunch in the wake of demonetization. Frank Hans Dannenberg Castellanos, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, who represents the voice of 157 foreign missions in Delhi, said the foreign missions should have access to their funds to meet day-to-day -day operations and that the 50,000 rupee a week cap on withdrawal was inadequate and must be lifted. In strong comments, he said that some big countries may even think of reciprocating in the same way with Indian diplomats posted abroad if they, could, if they continue to face the same problem. Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan and a number of other countries have already approached the government on the issue.
Russian Ambassador Alexander Kadakin in a letter to the government has already lodged a strong protest over the restrictions on cash withdrawal, saying it has severely affected the functioning of his embassy. Yeah, tourists are in the country, maybe they came before demonetization and they changed money and they're having a hard time getting their money back into their currency or they're just leaving back to their country and they can't get their money back in their currency. We also have a lot of medical uh, tourism patients who have come, have changed a large amount of money. And the opposition's protests over the demonetization issue remain unabated in the upper house even on Wednesday. The opposition parties reiterated their demand for Prime Minister's apology and accused the government of causing hardships to the people. The government, meanwhile, was quick to blame the opposition for causing disruptions over trivial excuses. But no government business could be transacted on Wednesday as the standoff between the government and the opposition stalled the proceedings of the House again. The monetization issue continued to deadlock the upper house on Wednesday. Leader of the opposition, Gulam Nabi Azad, alleged that the ill-conceived move had resulted in several deaths. He blamed the decision for a surge in unemployment while demanding an RBI update about the deposits and exchange of defunct currency. In Churassi, Why you create problem? 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 Why you BSP leader Mayavati and SP leader Naresh Agarwal also slammed the decision to scrap the high-value currency notes and demanded Prime Minister's apology. Why are you doing this? So, who is listening to the Prime Minister? Listen to me. 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 इसने पूरे देश को विकलांग कर दिया पूरे देश को स्टार्ट का डिस्कशन यस ये तो है इस चर्चा का यू स्टार्ट का डिस्कशन यस देयर इज ऑलरेडी अ डिस्कशन पेंडिंग इन द हाउस यू स्टार्ट का डिस्कशन ने देश को लाइन में लगाया है ये माफी मांगे यस जब तक दूसरी बात है माफी नहीं मांगेंगे हम लोग सदन में नहीं चलने देंगे Leading the government's charged leader of the House, Arun Jaitley, emphasized that the Prime Minister will make an intervention during the debate on demonetization. He accused the opposition of adopting an obstructionist strategy and disrupting the House proceedings. He said that the church is in this way, we have been happy. He said that the Prime Minister will run away from the church. The government will run away from the church. The government will run away from the church. They will come to the church. No, please. Please, please. In the midst of the sparring between the opposition and the treasury benches, zero hour and question hour were both disrupted. The chair then adjourned the house till 2 p.m. Houses are done till 2 p.m. Even in the post-lunch session, demands for Prime Minister's presence resonated. We have to discuss everything in detail and we cannot pass it in such a situation. Before that, we have to complete the discussion which is already on the way, sir. And for that, you just ensure that the Prime Minister who is expected here for the discussion, because so many issues are here to be discussed. The issue is we want to debate, but whom should we address? There are 14 ministers. Should I go around and go and talk to you? That is why when the Constitution says that this government becomes accountable, then the question is, one person takes responsibility. This is not the monetary issue on which I am talking to finance minister. I am talking about 14 ministries. The coordinator is the prime minister. 2G scam, on the discussion on that was the president. I am, I am referring back. We all insisted, we all insisted, including me, that the prime minister should be present to listen to us. For two full days, the then prime minister was present. The Congress alleged that India's global prestige had taken a hit due to demonetization. For what has been Finance on this said country, will do that. The financial anarchy, India's image has been solid globally. Who is answerable? Not finance minister. Is the one who addressed the nation that day. Okay. Like, like the super law. Okay, fine. It is he who is responsible. The leader of the House rejected demands for a conditional resumption of the discussion on demonetization. The Prime Minister has many other responsibilities. The Prime Minister will participate in the debate and if the opposition, if the opposition wants a debate, let them be honest enough to say yes and no. Let them not impose unreasonable and impossible conditions for a debate.
as the logjam prevailed even after Jaitley's assertion and with little signs of truce, the chair adjourned the House till Thursday. House stands adjourned till 11 a.m. on Thursday, the 8th December 2016. With inputs from Vishal Dhaya, Prithi Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Wednesday said that the government regrets the transitory pain of demonetization but the move will lead to a cleaner economy and better GDP growth in the long run. Defending the government's demonetization move, Jaitley said that Prime Minister Modi had the broad shoulders to face the consequences of this decision, causing some pain in transition, but which has also put India on the cusp of a major change. While addressing domestic and global investors in the petrochemical industry, Jaitley said that the current shortage in the cash system was being met by doing more digital transactions. He said that the long-term advantage of this new system will result in more money coming into the banking system, increase in capacity of banks to support the economy and availability of low-cost funds with banks. This so-called seven-decade normal had to be disrupted. And it had to be disrupted because uh, a normal for any society can't be this normal which is existed. And therefore the Prime Minister had the broad shoulders to face the consequences of this decision. And a decision of this kind uh, carries a pain in the transition which is regrettable but which was also factored in. But in the process you find that today the phase we are passing through, we are at a major cusp of change in history. Meanwhile, dismissing popular sentiment, the Reserve Bank of India opted to keep the key lending rate intact in the fifth bi-monthly monetary policy statement on Wednesday. The central bank chose to gauge inflationary pressures but affirmed to maintain an accommodative stance. RBI also lowered the GDP growth estimates. All six members of the RBI Monetary Policy Panel voted in favour of a status quo in repo rate at 6.25%. The RBI pegged inflation at 5% in the fourth quarter of 2016-17. It however added that the recent rise in crude oil prices present an upside risk to the inflation target. The RBI also lowered the GDP growth estimate to 7.1% in 2016-17 from the earlier projection of 7.6%. The MPC was of the view that given the reduction of the policy rate of 25 basis points in October, which cumulated to a reduction of 175 basis points since January 2015, a further reduction in the policy rate is not warranted at this juncture. Defending the demonetization effort, the RBI said withdrawal of the old notes could result in temporary reduction in inflation. It, however, cautioned that demonetization will result in short-run disruptions in cash-intensive sectors like retail, hotels, restaurants and transportation. The RBI also said that there was adequate supply of notes and urged people not to hold new currency. The central bank claimed that it supplied 4 lakh crore rupees in new notes, while nearly 11.85 lakh crore rupees, or 80% of the junk notes, have come back into the system. The decision was not and has not been taken in haste, but after detailed deliberations, uh, the consequences that have emanated from that were, were taken on board. And that's why the planning, the process and the implementation was what it was, keeping in mind that high secrecy had to be maintained. However, banks got a major liquidity boost with the central bank withdrawing the 100% cash reserve ratio requirement, which was imposed on November 26th. Whatever incremental cash that was uh, coming to the banks, which as we all know is in very large amount, uh, on that uh, the complete impounding which was done has been withdrawn. After the central bank's decision, the Sensex, which gained over 148 points in early trade, fell to close down 156 points at 26,237, while Nifty reached its crucial 8,100 levels. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. With a quick break here, but more news follows in a bit. Stay with us. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. 
Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas. <laughs> Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. More national news and foggy conditions continue to prevail in Delhi and NCR region. Visibility at the airport dropped to 150 meters, leading to delay in flights, which are usually affected when visibility drops uh, below 200 meters. Uh, over six international and seven domestic flights operating from Delhi Airport are reported to be delayed and one domestic flight cancelled. Also, rail services are the worst hit with at least 94 trains running late as of now. Foggy weather conditions are a result of easterly winds resulting in the increase of moisture levels. The Med Department says that the weather conditions will continue to remain the same in the coming days with a dip in both minimum and maximum temperature. In other news, Pakistan has admitted that it has inconclusive evidence on alleged Indian spy Kulbushan Jadav, who is under detention in Pakistan. According to the Pakistani media, Nawaz Sharif's advisor on foreign affairs, Sartaj Aziz, admitted to the Senate that the dossier on Jadav contained insufficient and inconclusive evidence. However, later in the day, the Pakistani Foreign Office, in a statement, refuted Aziz's remarks as absolutely incorrect, saying that proof against Jadav is irrefutable. Kulbushan Jadav was reportedly arrested in Baluchistan in March this year and has been accused by Pakistan of planning subversive activities. India has acknowledged Jadav as a retired Indian naval officer but denied the allegation that he was connected to the government. Meanwhile, a Pakistan international airline plane with 48 people, including crew members on board, has crashed in Abbottabad. There are no survivors. The reason for the crash is said to be engine problems. Here's a report. No survivors after a Pakistan International Airlines plane PK-661 with 48 people on board crashed and burst into flames in a hilly area near Abbottabad. The reason for the crash was reported to be engine problems. The plane was on its way to Islamabad from Chitral in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. तकरीबन चार बजे के करीब या सवा चार के करीब कंट्रोल टावर में इतला आई के एक जहाज का इंजन जो है वो डेड हो गया है, फेल हो गया है। चंद लम्हों के बाद उसी जहाज से इतला आई के वो मेडे की कॉल जिसको हम लोग कहते हैं कि मेडे की कॉल उसने दी और बस देखते देखते ही वो रेडार से गायब हो गया और उसके बाद कोई सवा चार या चार बीस पर हमें ये इतला मिली कि कोई साइटिंग हुई है धुआं नजर आया है पहाड़ में। Three foreign nationals are also among those killed. Popular Pakistani pop singer turned Islamic preacher Junaid Jamshed and his wife are also among the victims of the crash. The entire Pakistan is in tears. We are all in grief because. It is a major accident, a major plane crash where almost 40 plus people died along with the crew of PIA. And our beloved singer turned a religious scholar, Junaid Jamshed, he also uh, died in this particular plane crash. We have no words uh, 
everyone is in deep sorrow and grief. He just came here to show our sympathies to his family. Army troops and helicopters were mobilized to the spot of the crash. Rescue operations went on through the night and the black box was recovered. PIA said the ATR turbocop aircraft has undergone regular maintenance and in October passed an A-check maintenance certification performed after every 500 flight hours. The airline said a full investigation of the crash involving international agencies would be conducted. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And back home now and in the capital, the opposition's protests at the Gandhi statue in Parliament complex is presently underway. Close to 16 opposition parties have united to protest against the government's demonetization move and its implementation. In fact, the parties are protesting against the manner of implementation of the move that they say is causing severe hardships to the people. Those are the opposition leaders, of course, led by Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi being part of the protest there. Remember, it's been a month since the demonetization move. And uh, in fact, uh, it's, it was on the 8th of November when the 500,000 rupee notes were, of course, banned. Uh, but since then, uh, there has been, of course, a lot of mixed reactions. Uh, of course, a lot of it taken uh, as an advantage by the opposition with the number of people that we see across lines outside ATMs and banks across the country, even till today. But in some international news now, Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi officially resigned on Wednesday night after losing in a referendum on constitutional reform. Renzi handed his resignation to Italian President Sergio Mattarella after giving a speech at the headquarters of the Democratic Party while the president asked him to stay on for a, in a caretaker role. The resignation has opened the way for the president to launch a round of talks with all party leaders in order to name a new prime minister and to form a transition government. Renzi's centre-left government had been trying to reduce the power of the Senate and reform the constitution to improve administrative efficiency, but his plan was rejected by a referendum held on Sunday with Renzi announcing his resign resignation on Monday. We are very conscious of the relevance of this moment for the institutional aspect. There is a natural internal passage to do, which I think will be e sarà molto duro nella chiarezza che deve contraddistinguere un grande partito democratico. Secondo me l'Italia ha bisogno di un governo, ha bisogno di un governo che riesca a governare, ne va anche la reputazione internazionale del nostro paese e quindi spero che il governo possa governare almeno per qualche mese. Ma siccome non siamo in un paese normale, purtroppo temo che Renzi abbia preso malissimo la sconfitta e voglia una rivincita immediata. Eh, Grillo d'altra parte ha tutto il vantaggio a dargli questa rivincita immediata anche con una legge pessima. Vogliamo che il paese si esprima, quando si esprime fa delle grandi scelte, quindi perché non fidarsi del paese Italia? Syrian rebels have called for a five day truce to allow the evacuation of civilians after withdrawing from their last strongholds in Aleppo's old city. Rebels have said that the civilians are in great danger and they would support any initiative to ease their suffering. The U.S. and five Western powers also put out a joint statement calling for an immediate ceasefire to allow aid into rebel-held areas. But the Syrian government has ruled out any further ceasefires. The government said that a victory in Aleppo would be a huge step towards ending the five-year five civil war. This is a strategy in Halab. وسيحول المسار بالكامل حتى في العملية السياسية من موقع إلى موقع آخر بيعرف أنه هذه المعنويات أصبحت في الحضيض وأن هذه الانهيارات التي بدأت And finally some cricket action and India will take on England in the fourth test match to be played at Mumbai's Vankhari Stadium today Team India will be eyeing to create history If they avoid a loss in Mumbai they will secure a fifth straight series victory for the first time in 84 years in the last match played at Mohali, India recorded an eight-wicket win in Vishakhapatnam, a win by 246 runs, and the Rajko test ended in a draw. The home side is 2-0 ahead and will look to lead the series, even with a draw, while England has to definitely register a win to stay alive in the series. On the team composition, India's lead uh, fast bowler, Mohammad Shami, has reported sore knee and middle-order batsman Ajinkya Rahane broke his right index finger and has been ruled out of the series. Karnataka batsman Manish Pandey and Mumbai Seema Shardur Thakur have been added to the squad as cover. However, India may bring Bhuvneshwar Kumar back in the playing 11 instead of Shami and Karun Nair should retain his place in the middle order 
after Rahane's injury. Parthiv Patel retains his role as wicketkeeper with Ridhiman Saha yet to recover from his thigh strain. KL Rahul might also be slotted back into the top of the order. Currently, not really, because if you see whoever stepped in has given uh, match-winning performances. You speak about Bhuvi, two times has come in um, in um, anti, uh, St. Lucia once and uh, in Calcutta once. Both times he's picked up five wickets and been the match winner for us. So I'm not worried at all because the guys sitting outside are waiting for opportunities. And that's it on The Breakfast News. Thanks for joining us.